What's going on guys, this is Ali here and welcome to part one of this two-part manipulation layout tutorial series. On screen you can see some of the best manipulation layouts that I've ever made and I thought I would show you guys some of the techniques and methods that I use when I go about making one of these layouts. Uh, basically a while back I did say that I would be doing a giveaway because I felt guilty for not uploading in a while and this is it. So uh, all you guys need to do is drop a like and a comment about why you like me. Let's go with that. Why you guys like me. Um, so drop a like and a comment and then I'm going to be randomly selecting one of you guys to win a layout similar to one of these. Uh, I'm going to be putting in between 8 and 12 hours work into this layout for you guys so uh, be sure to enter. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial series. I've tried to keep it as short as possible um, but still I've gone through a lot of detail. Um, so yeah, sit back, enjoy and I will see you in my next video. Designers will get this part 2 coming out very very soon so get hyped for that. Peace. Okay, what's going on guys? This is Ali here and welcome to my tutorial. And as I've already mentioned, this is a two-part series. So in this part um, of this two-part tutorial series, I'm going to be talking to you about logos and AI files. And then I'm going to be moving into um, Cinema 4D compositing. And for those of you who don't know what compositing is, it's uh, basically when you take an already existent image and you... Um, place a shape, some text or logo, anything like that into the existing image and then you uh, shadow it and you put lights and you alter it so that it fits into the scene and it looks as if it was there in the first place. So it's basically making something look realistic within a picture. So I'm going to keep this tutorial as quick as possible because I know you guys, when you, when you look on YouTube and you find 50 minute tutorials on how to do one thing, it's a bit depressing and you want to be able to just go through a quick tutorial. So I'm going to make this as quick as possible but without um, losing any of the quality. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do when learning how to create my layouts um, is how to make an AI file of a logo because you need um, a logo in many cases to make these layouts. So I'm starting with my logo you can see on the screen here. All the files that I'm using in this tutorial by the way are going to be in the description. So um, you can use those and follow along as you please. So um, just quickly I'm going to show you how to make a, an AI file of a logo so that you can then open it in Cinema 4D and you can use it um, to composite into a picture. Okay, so you're going to want to come over to the pen tool, which is over on your left, and I'm going to be giving this tutorial as if none of you guys know what you're doing, so that everyone can follow it. Um, so you're going to want to click at the first point of your logo, and with this pen tool you're going to basically be cutting around the logo and creating what's known as a work path, and then you're going to export that uh, as an AI file, and then we can open it in Cinema 4D. So, I'm going to show you guys how to use the pen tool quickly, so you're going to cl click on the first point, then when you come to a straight line you're going to want to hold shift, and what this does is this locks the line, um, and make sure that it's exactly straight and that works at 45 degree angles vertically and horizontally. So we've done that point. Now when you come to a curve, you're going to want to click with the, the pen tool at the end of the curve and then hold the click and drag and then that's going to allow you to create a curved line. Once you've done that and you're happy with it, let go and hold Alt and then click on the anchor point of that curve here and that will cut the pen tool. Then you're going to want to continue around the whole logo using those two things that I've just shown you there with the pen tool and finish the selection and once you've done this you're going to have a complete work path so for tutorial purposes I'm going to just complete the selection here but obviously you guys are going to have the whole logo selected and um, that's going to create um, this work path here that you're now going to be able to use and um, also you may notice that with some logos including this one it has two parts it has the main body and then it has this extra limb here. And so once you complete the selection of this part here, like this shape, excluding this limb, you, all you can then do is you'll complete the selection for that path and then just continue. Uh, once you've finished going around this shape, go around this one, and that will just add to the same work path. So once you've gone around the whole logo, you go File, Export, Path to Illustrator, and then you, uh, it will say Path, Work Path, that's OK. Hit OK and then call it whatever you want. So I'm just going to call it Tutorial Logo 1 and then hit save um, and then we're good to go. So now we're going to move into uh, Cinema 4D. I'll allow you guys to finish pen tooling the logo and I'll see you over in Cinema 4D. Okay, so welcome to Cinema 4D and for those of you who don't know, in the bottom grey bar this is where you create your materials. In the top right grey bar this is where you have your layers and in the bottom right grey bar this is where you edit your layers. Um, and I must just quickly apologise, when I use Cinema 4D my laptop gets very hot and you may start to hear a bit of a fan come in. Uh, I apologise for this, it's just, I, there's not a lot I can do, um, my computer just 
kind of stresses out when I open up Cinema 4D. Um, so we're going to start with uh, getting our image involved that we're going to be compositing onto. And you can download this from the link in the description below. Um, and to get this involved, what you're going to want to do is double click along this bottom grey bar and you'll create a plain matte texture. You then double click this and it'll open up the material editor tab. And then under color here, you come to texture, hit this arrow and then load image. You then want to select the image that I've provided for you and then hit no when this tab pops up. Okay, then you close your material editor and then you've got your texture or your image. Now what you're going to want to do is to uh, create a background and for this you click on this tab here and then you come down to background and you've got a background layer. Now you drag this texture or this image onto the background layer and you'll see it's created like that. Um, so now what you're going to want to do to make sure that the image renders exactly the same um, dimensions as you've put it into Cinema 4D, um, you come to render settings and to output and then you want to enter in the settings um, or the dimensions of the image and so I already know that this image is 13, uh, 1347 by 920 um, so you enter those numbers in if you're following the tutorial now um, otherwise you enter whatever the dimensions are of the image you're using. Um, once you've done that you come to save and then you click these three dots here and give your um, project their name. So I'm just going to call it, uh, oh no, I'm going to call it Logo 2. And then save it on my desktop. Okay, um, then for format, you're going to want to click on that and then come down to PNG. Cool. Um, and then you come to anti aliasing. And then where it says anti aliasing geometry, put it best. And that just gives you better quality render. Cool. So once that's done, that's your render setting sorted, um, and now you're going to want to uh, import your logo AI. So for this, a lot, a lot, what a lot of people do is they go file open, and then that messes up because it opens up a new project. So what you want to do is you go file merge, then you open up your logo, which I named tutorial logo one, and then you just hit OK, and you'll see that it will pop up, and um, you may notice that it pops up just to the side, but there it is. So you just scroll out, um, and with these buttons here, um, just for those of you who don't know, this one lets you move sort of sideways and up and down. This one lets you move, uh, zoom in, zoom out, and this one lets you rotate, like so. So you can rotate the logo, and for now, you do, we need to make it 3D. So to do this, you come to this tab here, and you click on Extrude NURBS. Okay, um, and then on your tutorial logo layer, um, because this logo has two different parts to it, you can click this cross here and it will bring up these two parts of the logo. If you've got more, there'll be more um, parts popping up here. And if there's just one, then uh, you'll just have one. Okay, okay, so firstly, you're going to want to have a, uh, a second extrude NURBS layer. As there are two parts, you're going to want two extrude NURBS layers. So you click on extrude NURBS and you hit Command C and then Command V and that will duplicate the layer. Um, if you're using Windows, I believe you use Control c Control v Then you're going to want to drag each of the paths onto each of the NURBS. So one onto here, and then two onto the second one. And you'll see that the logo becomes 3D. And the first thing that I do when I'm making my um, layouts is I make this um, 3D uh, shape sort of um, thicker. And so you click on the top extrude NURBS, make sure, oh, apologies. I know there are updates available. Um, so you click on Extrude NURBS 1, and then you hold Command, and then click on the second one. And then this will allow you to change the movement. So you come to Movement down here, where it says 20 centimeters, and you just drag this up, and it will make it thicker. So I'll have it on around about uh, 120, like so. Uh, there we go. OK, um, so once you've got that logo, um, what you are then going to want to do is um, you're going to want to um, get a plane and you're going to want to position it in front of this screen here. Okay, so we're just going to move the logo to one side for now. We'll just put it over there. And um, now you're going to want to come to this uh, cube here and open up a plane. Now the plane will open up and it's basically um, just a flat square. Um, and you're going to want to position this plane exactly in front of the surface that you want to put your logo onto. So we're going to put it along this surface here. So we're going to firstly want to rotate it um, and by clicking this tool up here, and you just you can just rotate to try and make this fit the back wall. So we're going to do that. 
then with uh, the move tool you can move it up on the vertical axis and then to change the actual dimensions of this um, plane in the bottom right uh, make sure that you click on the plane and then in the bottom right you'll have width and height you can edit um, how wide and high the square is by altering these numbers so that's the height obviously and the width is the width so um, we're going to have it much wider so sort of like this so we're going to scroll it up to around about 1,150 like so and I'm um, just going to rotate it a bit more a lot of this is trial and error just to let you guys know so um, this is why some of my layouts take quite a while it's because a lot of this is just a bit fiddly and you need to make sure you get it right um, so I, th I think that's more or less right um, what I might do actually is um, bring it, make it higher um, so I'm going to up the height to around about 750 and we're going to have that there ok cool so that's the plane done and now to um, basically make the plane render um, as part of this image you need to hold control on your keyboard and then where your texture is on your background you hold control and then you click and drop that onto the plane uh, you'll notice that then the plane the kind, of, kind of seems invisible but it means that it's fitting into the scene then on plane on the layer plane you right click go to cinema 4d tags compositing you click that and then down here you tick the only box that isn't un that isn't ticked um, compositing background okay so now if you uh, preview your render by clicking here you'll see that the plane actually um, you can't see it's invisible because it fits into the scene so um, now uh, we've got that plane um, we're going to want to position the logo onto it so um, make sure that you have your logo selected by clicking on both of the extrude nerves tabs click on one hold command and click on the other or click on one control then the other if you're on windows um, and then you move the logo um, in front of the plane obviously um, but you need the logo to be actually be touching the plane and I'm fairly confident this logo is a lot closer to us than the plane is so you're gonna have, want to move it back and as you can see it disappears as it goes behind it so you bring it in front and uh, we're going to want to reduce the size of the logo as well so you click on this tool here rescaling size tool and then you just click on the logo and drag and it'll actually just resize it down so it's just a quick way of doing it so we're going to have it around about that size then click on the movement tool again move up and then along like that and we're going to have it just in front so make sure with the uh, with the movement you can see as the logo is kind of just sitting on top of the plane um, so as I move it you see that the bottom part disappears before the top which means that actually this part of the logo is further away from us so we need to rotate it so that when we move it it more or less all disappears at the same time like that that then means that it's pretty much flat um, you then want to create a light so you hit light here and then with this you just drag it to more or less where the lights are situated in the piece already so you can see there are these two lights up here so we're going to more or less have the light in the same place like so and then to make it more realistic you're going to need shadowing so when, once you've got the light selected here you come down to the bottom right grey box and you hit shadow here then where it says none put shadow map soft click OK and then um, hit preview render and you'll see that you actually um, the logo is sitting on there pretty nicely actually um, the shadowing looks more or less how we wanted it I'm going to put one more light in here um, so that it does the shadowing doesn't match um, but um, for now that's looking pretty good and one thing about the techniques that I use is I always keep the logo grey I never texture it in Cinema 4D because I'd much rather do it in Photoshop um, and if you leave it grey you can then overlay textures onto the logo much easier and they're going to sit on the logo really nicely um, if the logo was black then overlaying textures don't, won't really work so keep it a nice light grey and that will work lovely so um, we're going to want to put one more light in so you see this light here we're just going to um, using the, the um, keyboard shortcut we used earlier command C command V duplicate that light and then we're going to drag it over to more or less where the other light is like so then hit render preview and you can see that it's sitting nicely you've got a bit of shadow um, and it's lit up well but I would actually quite like the shadow to be a bit denser so we're gonna up the so you click on um, one of the lights and up the density to 100% uh, sorry to um, from 100% to maybe one 
135. We'll try that, and then do the same with the other one. Up to 135. This is again. This is a lot. This is a lot of trial and error. So it's for just to fit your own um, preferences. Um, so I'm quite liking that to be honest with you. So I think I'm going to keep that. Um, so I, so now once you're happy with it, that's that's all it is. That's the compositing done. So now you're going to want to hit render, like so, and you'll see that the logo is rendered onto the um, the wall nicely. Um, it's composited nicely and it fits. And finally, the last bit of this tutorial, um, if you're happy with your logo and you're uh, comfortable to move into texturing in Photoshop and continuing, then that's great. But um, one thing that I like to do, um, which a lot of other people uh, tend not to do um, when attempting to make these kind of style of layouts, um, is I like to then go back um, and then re-render uh, this uh, as a new file. So you go to render settings, go to save then uh, we'll change this name to logo free, hit save. But on this, you're gonna to want to tick alpha channel. And then you close this uh, render settings bar or box. Um, then I delete the background, delete the plane. So you've literally just got the logo and the lights. Then I render this out and all you have is the 3D logo. And you may be wondering why I've done that, but actually it, it's a very simple way to get the logo uh, lit exactly correctly for the scene um, and you'll have it on a brand new layer within Photoshop. So you can then open um, the fully rendered image with the logo on uh, and then if you need it, if you need that logo on a new layer, um, you'll then have it um, separate and you won't have to pen tool it off of your initial image. Um, so that's just a quick tip. Um, and also you can create clipping masks with textures and things within Photoshop to the logo and it's much easier. So just, just do that. <laughs> um, but for now, um, that is uh, the first tutorial done. So we've gone through uh, AI logos, um, creating them, importing them into the Cinema 4D and then uh, positioning the um, logo within the piece and compositing the logo. Um, so now we've got the image with the logo composited. The next tutorial is going to be on how we texture it, how we make it look uh, more involved uh, in the scene by adding um, colours, strokes, um, uh, like I said, textures. We can add vines um, that will attach to the wall to make it look more like it's in the layout. And then I'll go through how you display it on a layout and all that good stuff. So if you have enjoyed this first part, um, please leave a like and a comment. Um, uh, I'll remind you again, this is a giveaway. So um, uh, all of you who like and comment uh, are gonna be entered in for a giveaway. I'm giving away a background, um, a new composited background. Um, they take me around about eight, eight hours. You can look in my portfolio um, and they'll give examples of um, the kind of compositing layouts that uh, I do, or composited layouts that I do. Um, yeah, so for now, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Um, you guys are amazing. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Um, so take care. Have a good day.